brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that supports life and family. 5% of your monthly plan price goes to your favorite charity. Buy the way you believe at CharityMobile.com and use promo code TRADITION. Do you remember Fiducia Supplicants? Issued just before Christmas of last year. It seems like ancient history now. It really does, given how bizarre things have gotten with rumors of the of a further banning on the traditional mass imminent and with documents on the destruction of Petrine primacy and the Vigano news and all these other things. It seems to have gotten lost. And a lot of people are tired of fiducia supplicants that talk is just on a core level it can't disturb the soul. But this is some good news. Bishop Athanasius Schneider has taken upon a great risk of himself to step forward and say that the, day, the document itself represents a danger to the faith. He wrote an article in Crisis Magazine. No, I'm not reading the whole thing to you. You should read it at Crisis Magazine. But I have a couple of excerpts here for you that will explain what he sees this to be a danger of. We see this today because those who do not go along with the document, which in plain language says to provide blessings for the uh, James Martin crowd and their relationships, explicitly says that in the document. I know, I've read it. That if we don't go along with this, if we don't affirm it as being an authentic teaching of the magisterium of the church, then we are schismatics. That is what we see now. Bishop Schneider publicly is now standing up to Francis. You have to understand what happens when you stand up to the Pope publicly in this pontificate. He is taking a great risk to himself by reminding us of the Catholic faith and the Catholic truth. So please say a prayer for Bishop Athanasius Schneider as we go over this. The headline today is from Crisis Magazine. The problem of blessing double S-type couples and its consequence for the doctrine and life of the Catholic Church. Fiducia supplicants deeply and detrimentally affects the Catholic Church as a whole, as well as local Catholic communities. There's a great deal of talk about unity in the Church today. It's one of Francis's greatest refrains. It's at the core of one of the reasons that they accused Vigano of being a schismatic, that he damages the unity of the church. It's why the Latin Mass, we're told, is being suppressed, because it damages the unity of the church. Fiducia supplicans damages the unity of the church in ways far more profound than anything Vigano or traditionalists have done. That is the simple truth of this, because it puts us, as faithful Catholics, Standing in defense of the actual written law of the church, the law of God as expressed in sacred scripture, against this heterodox practice now authorized by Rome. A heterodox practice that gives lip service to the formal teaching while defying it. That damages the unity of the church in ways that most people will never really understand until you have taken some flack for one reason or another for standing in faith, defense of the faith. From the article, quote, The Church blesses individuals and groups, generally speaking, such as the blessing given by the priest at the end of a liturgical celebration, even if some of those present are in a state of sin. However, the dilemma lies in the, quote, possibility of blessing double S partners, specifically designating as the recipient of a blessing those couples whose ongoing relationship directly contradicts divinely revealed truth. The document Fiducia Supplicans says that in this case, a priest must omit, quote, to investigate their situation, meaning that he is not to inquire about their situation nor discuss it with them. This means turning a blind eye to any wrong situation or state in which they may be living. At the same time, this injunction effectively prevents the priest from calling them to repentance. Indeed, not only is such a blessing to no avail, since it will produce no good for those couples, but on the contrary, it will produce evil by leading them to believe that not only are their unions and expressions of James Martin-type uh, affection not sinful, but that they are willed as good by God. End quote. That is the great danger to their souls. We have seen this play out now, that they believe that they are as God made them. They're not called to repentance. Many believe now that the, the church officially accepts that sin that cries out to heaven for justice, according to sacred scripture. 
Thus, they believe that it's only a matter of time now until the church gives them the secular parody of holy matrimony, and that that parody of holy matrimony in the world as it is now is fully accepted in the church when it's not. They believe that sacrament of holy matrimony will be open to them soon. This document has done a great deal of damage to souls, and it's one of those things that you are not permitted now to point out, otherwise you are accused of damaging the unity of the faith. Don't believe me? Here's Bishop Athanasius Schneider saying exactly the same thing. Quote, Another gravely detrimental effect of fiducia supplicants is that those who do not approve of the double S pairings within the heart of the Catholic Church will now be labeled as disobeying church authority. However, the truth is that refusing to bless double S couples is not an act of disobedience to the church, but only to those authorities who abuse their God-given power. Refusing to give such blessings is, in fact, true obedience to God, who is more worthy of being obeyed. Secular powers, the particular lobby associated with the multi-letter acronym of theirs, and anti-church agendas are ultimately the driving force behind the issuance of this declaration, whose aim is to sow the seed of deep doubt in the heart of the church. And they will surely exert a significant pressure to compel Catholics to accept and promote it. They will falsely invoke the obligation to obey church teaching. And those priests and faithful who criticize fiducia supplicants and refuse to implement it will be accused of being unfaithful to the Pope. End quote. Pope Francis has effectively destroyed church unity on numerous occasions, be well beyond just going after traditional Catholics and saying nasty things about traditionalists. He destroys church unity when he advocates for making normal sins that crowd to heaven for justice. He destroys church unity when he basically says that anybody who professes Christ is part of the body of Christ, even though that defies 2,000 years of church teaching. He destroys church unity when he gives men like Marco Rupnik an effective pass while going after Bishop Strickland, Archbishop Vigano, and any other bishop you care to name. 30 of them or something at this point over the course of 10 years. He destroys church unity when he goes after people who have the faith for wanting the faith, the same faith as our forebears. He is the great threat to church unity. Not bishops like Strickland or Schneider. It's documents like Fiducia Supplicants and the countless others he's done. Amoris Laetitia, Fratelli Tutti, Laudato Si, all of these documents. All of these official but informal teachings of his that don't bear the weight of of papal infallibility. So thankfully, we have the ability to, given the extraordinary circumstance of their contents, ignore what he has to say in terms of our own lived life. But we have the duty as Catholics to know what it is he's saying so that we can correct the errors of other people before it costs them their souls. I'm curious what you have to say about this. Do you agree with Bishop Schneider that this document destroys church unity and endangers souls? Do you think that he's a schismatic and that he needs to fall in line. You think we're all schismatics here who need to fall in line and stop criticizing Francis and think that he's the greatest thing since sliced bread? Let me know in the comments what you think of all this, please. You like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So does sharing this on social media. That helps too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.